So my last episode got blasted pretty hard by the elitist snob crowd, and one of you guys, one of you guys even threw down the challenge, and you said, learn the metagame and do the math. Alright, we can do that. But in order to explain the math and explain where my numbers come from, we got to put a lot of setup on this. So this week, we're going to be invoking science! Science! Uh, we're going to need another Timmy. So in order to explain everything, I first have to start with the metagame itself. When you play MMOs, you don't see the numbers under the hood for the most part. You see them when you look at your tune, or possibly your gear, and when you hit something you get a magical number showing damage, but most of us never care to see any more than that. Enter the art of theory crafting. It could get its own show. The idea is to figure out what combination of gear, enchants, racial abilities, and so on will provide the best possible combination. For most people, this seems to be the definition of metagaming. But I go a step further because I've been paper gaming so long. You know, actually sitting around a table with other people with dice and all that, yeah. So to me, metagaming is using your player knowledge to affect your character's actions in the world. A good example is, let's say you've got a person in your party, we'll call him Bob, and Bob as a player has a reputation of screwing over the party. He just does stupid things, or he just gets the party killed all the time, or whatever. So one night as the party settles down to sleep, my character, out of the blue, walks over to him and assassinates him. And the only reason that I'd give is the boy just needed killing. That's metagaming. Sometimes it's not a bad idea for party cohesion either, but I digress. But metagaming doesn't just have to go with inter-party relationships. No, sometimes you can go to this. Okay, so he kills a deer, he tans the hides, he stretches the skins, he makes an anodized aluminum frame, he learns how to extrude and weld all in about five minutes, huh? He learned aerodynamics. And not to mention understanding the Bernoulli principle, but let's move on. MMOs like WoW are filled with stuff like this. Engineering in a sword and sorcery world should be more like this. Not this. But I understand why they do it. It's part comfort level for the players, as they're familiar with these things, and also part, hey, it'd be really cool if we had this. And because it's what players want. But including helicopters and motorcycles also implies that things like physics and chemistry also work in Azeroth, just like they do in our world. So as a result, we can apply what we know and what's been proven to work here, and apply that to doing science in Azeroth. This goes for any MMO world that's out there for that matter, but WoW is what we're going to be focusing on today. But I must give credit where credit is due before I dive headlong into this. A lot of my research in this is based on the prior research is done by James Wallace. James Wallace gave a talk during Interesting 2008 in which he gave a geophysical survey of the world of Warcraft. And in his talk, he actually highlights one of the main problems of doing a geophysical survey in World of Warcraft. It's, it's kind of hard. For a start, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Secondly, there are the locals who aren't always cooperative. <laughs> but that was before Wrath of the Lich King, and right now we do have a reliable unit of measurement, and that's how I got all of my figures. Our test subject will be a level 85 Torrent Hunter, because as in range DPS, he has several abilities with a labeled maximum range, specifically Arcane Shot and Hunter's Mark both of which have a labeled range of 40 and 100 yards respectively, so knowing the maximum distance of the spells, now we can get to work. Our laboratory will be Ogremar because they have this great terrace that is long and flat and has a great target setup. I also found a similar thing in Ironforge, so if you're on the Alliance side and wish to do these experiments on your own, I highly encourage it. My reason for doing this is twofold. Number one, I either have to confirm or deny Mr. Wallace's prior work in this area, and number two, if we're going to be talking about extreme range shooting, we have to have a good grasp on what that range actually looks like within the game. So, okay, we've already pretty much determined that a lot of the real-world science carries over into the world of Azeroth. That means that we can import a lot of the things that we already know to be true into the world of Azeroth. Things like, oh, I don't know, scientific formulas, like, um, that one. So now all we need to do is fill in the triangle. Distance is 100 yards. Time is easy enough to get with a stopwatch, so we just need to figure out the speed with experimentation. 
Highlighting the target, you go back 100 yards. You know you have the correct distance when the spell becomes unusable, and interestingly enough, the target vanishes from draw distance. Then simply, you walk the distance while timing it. All tunes walk and run at the same speed regardless of their size, and Blizzard does this for purposes of game balance. So, knowing that, I did this five times walking, five times running, five times on a ground mount, and five times with an air mount. I threw the top and bottom times, averaged out the others to account for operator error, and came up with a data set. And uh, I didn't want to believe what the numbers were telling me, but you can't ignore what the data is actually saying. And in this case, the data is saying that tunes walk over 5 miles an hour, and they run at over 14 miles an hour. Yep, a Torin walked 100 yards in 39.32 average seconds and ran the same distance in 14.24 average seconds, or simply put, walking speed is 5.2 miles per hour, running speed is 14.35 miles per hour. And just for reference, the average human walking speed in the real world is 2.5 to 3.5 miles an hour, and the fastest man at the 100 meter dash can run at 23 miles per hour, and the fastest woman can do it in 21 miles per hour. Or, to put this in a more realistic sense, assuming my numbers are near correct, every tune in the World of Warcraft can run, fully encumbered with full armor, swords, and bag full of crap, a 4 minute 11 second mile. And Bannister has done it! The reason I didn't believe my numbers at first is they just didn't match up to what Mr. Wallace had come up with. Then I realized what Mr. Wallace had made his mistake. Because we know that a typical adult male walks at a speed of 5.6 kilometers an hour, that's 3.5 miles an hour. Nazaroth, they're moving at this hyper velocity. Okay, so why do I need to figure this one out? Well, it's the formula. If you want to get distance, and you happen to know the speed, and you happen to know the time it takes to get there, you can figure that distance out. And if we're going to be talking about sharpshooters, we're going to need to know what these distances actually are. And as I said, I also tested the ground and flight mounts at maxed out speeds, and I found the ground mount runs at 30.94 miles per hour, which actually isn't too unreasonable. That's about the gallop speed of a normal horse. Interestingly enough, the Frostwolf Howler mount has a gallop of 9 strides per 100 yards on the dot. This made measurement a heck of a lot easier, as I could count the strides and measure distance using that. This is really handy when you're at a PvP battleground and you can't call a timeout to get out the tape measure. So, off to some battlegrounds to get some measurements! Using the 9 stride method, it made it a lot easier to get larger distances. Most battlegrounds have a straight line run that's pretty easy to sprint, assuming you're not being attacked at the time. You grab a screenshot at the beginning, wolf sprint 28 paces, grab a screenshot at the end, use maps you can easily get off of any website, and you can gauge a 300 yard distance. So why 300 yards? Well, 300 yards is workable in a battleground situation, not to mention it scales up pretty nicely into the rest of the world. Now, assuming that all the maps are done to scale, all we need to do is figure out what that 300 yards looks like, multiply that to about 900 yards, which is roughly about half a mile of distance, and then we can actually get an idea of the scale of the entirety of the World of Warcraft. So using this measurement technique, the Isle of Conquest is about a half a mile wide and three quarters of a mile long. Tol Barad is around the three quarter of a mile mark from end to end, and Alterag Valley is about a half a mile wide to a whopping mile and a quarter long, roughly. Again, when the locals are trying to kill you, it's really hard to be accurate, but for the sake of this discussion, these measurements will work. This leads me to want to confirm one of Wallace's claims about the size of Azeroth as a whole. Again, this is assuming that the maps are printed to scale, and as far as I see, there's no reason to doubt that they aren't. I decided to recreate one of Wallace's experiments in World, utilizing what I had already figured out on my small scale tests. Uh, my advantage here is that I have a reliable way to measure distance, my wolf mount, 9 running strides equals 100 yards. I also found in my testing that the wolf's hind paws while walking do 100 paces per 100 yards, so this makes accurate measurements really easy to do. Well, hang on, stop, stop, stop. At this point, we're going to the metric system, guys. I'm sorry, but that's just going to make the math so much easier to do. Okay, so a little research, 1 kilometer is equal to 1,093.6 yards. Okay, so I just need to find a kilometer. The flattest, lowest level area I could think of to do this was the Barrens, and I found a pretty straight run that gave me a 2 kilometer pretty straight line. Plotted it on the Barrens map, extrapolated onto Kalimdor as a whole, and you get 21.3 kilometers north to south, 9.73 kilometers east to west. Because we know that a typical adult male walks at a speed of 5.6 kilometers an hour, that's 3.5 miles an hour. 
8 minutes 15 seconds, that makes 1.7 kilometers. Which would explain the discrepancies between his numbers and my numbers. Now, let's be fair, he did do his stuff before Wrath of the Lich King, so he was going off of a couple of assumptions based on what he already knew, and I really can't fault him for that. On the other hand, it's a very good possibility that my numbers are very wrong on this one, so I have to keep that open. But for now, let's keep with my numbers. So using this, I can also extrapolate that the Eastern Kingdoms are roughly 5.3 kilometers east-west and about 20 kilometers north-south, but my numbers get a little wonky here. And even though these are larger than Wallace's numbers, they still produce the same problem, that this is a tiny, tiny planet. For reference, the state of Texas is almost 700,000 square kilometers in size. Azeroth as a planet is significantly smaller. I have it at 417.7 square kilometers, or 161.2 square miles for the total planet. Just for perspective, New York City, 1,214 square kilometers. Chicago is 606 square kilometers. Hell, the town I'm living in is a quarter the size of the known planet of Azeroth. And yet at 3 o'clock in the morning, I can't get a decent burger in this town. Go fig. But let's take this all the way out to its somewhat illogical conclusion. Let's say that Azeroth is eh, two-thirds water, just like Earth. That would mean the water area would be 835.528 square kilometers, which, when you wrap it around a sphere, gives Azeroth a 9.9 kilometer radius, or a 19.97 kilometer diameter, with a 62.748 kilometer circumference. And just for reference, the diameter of Earth's moon, 3,474 kilometers. At this point, you're probably asking, why is this even important? Well, for starters, if we're going to be talking about long-range shooting, it's important to establish distance and a reliable way to measure distance in a world that has no rulers and signposts. Second of all, it's to point out that most people have no concept of how tiny this world really is. It feels big, but that's just an illusion of the game. It's not really intentional, it's just a trick that our brain plays on us. Third is to actually show you that you can actually do hard science in a virtual world. MMOs have served as inadvertent platforms for research things like social and behavioral sciences in the past, so why not look at them as scientific laboratories now? But mostly this is all set up for the next episode in which we're going to be talking about long range shooting. But I had to set everything up because if we're going to be talking about long distance shooting, I better damn well know my ranges before I start filling out my card if you get my meaning on that. Well, that and I guess I am kind of a reality junkie in which if you're going to put enough reality into your game, I'm going to hold you accountable for the rest of it. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, there's some things that I'm just not going to try to figure out, like how such a small golf ball sized planet can still have 1G of Earth gravity on it. <sighs> if you guys want to figure that one out, have fun, but it just makes my head hurt. Hey, Tiger. Yeah, but what do you- Val, <laughs> what's up? I just wanted to wish you a happy winter, Val. Yeah, happy holidays to you too, Val. Hi, Pa.